Today, we're going to take a look at Next.js's client-side routing cache and how to deal with changes that happen in an external system. And to show you what I mean, I've got this very, very simple blog post app. It lists a bunch of blog posts. We can come over here. We can click into a blog post. We see the post content. We can go back home, click into a post again. Like I said, very, very simple. But this data, all this blog post data lives in Prisma. In fact, we can come over to Prisma Studio and we can find our test post and we can just update the title. Let me get say test post edited. And then now if we come back to our app, we still see the old title makes sense. We haven't reloaded the page. We haven't clicked any links yet, but if we go back home, it still says test post. And no matter how many times I click between the test post link and back home, we are not going to see the updated test post edited title. And the reason for this is, is that Next.js has a copy of these pages in its client side cache. So it doesn't need to go to the server and have the server regenerate them. But this is a problem because our users are now seeing stale data. They're not seeing the data that's currently in the database until they come up here and refresh the page. Okay, so today we are gonna fix this problem and we are gonna have our page automatically update whenever our data in Prisma Studio changes. And in order to do that, we need some way to check if the post has changed. Over in our component, we are going to write a new function called check if post changed. So how do we know if a post has changed? Well, remember we're using Prisma and every single object in our database is going to have this updated at field. This is a date and Prisma is automatically going to set this date to the last time the post was updated. So if we see a new updated at field, we know that the post has changed. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to create a new variable called post last updated and it is going to be post dot updated at dot get time and then down in our check if post changed function i am going to refetch the post so we'll create a new variable called check post and we will await get post params dot post id and then a new variable called check post last updated equals check post dot updated at get time. And now we know our post has changed if post last updated does not equal check post last updated. Now I just need to get this variable right up here. And this function, since it uses a wait, it needs to become an async function. And then finally, right here, we can console log did change. Now this function should tell us if our post is changed, but we need some way to invoke it and we can do that using a server action. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to mark this as a server action with use server. And then down in our JSX, I'm going to create a new form with an action check if post changed. And we'll throw in a little button here and we'll say check if post changed. Okay, now if we pop open the console and we come over here and we click this check if post change button, we will see a console log of did change false. Uh, but here's the really cool part. We're gonna come over to Prisma Studio. We are gonna make another edit to our post. And then back in our UI, we will check if the post has changed. And there we go. We get a message that says did change true. So we know our post has changed. It has been updated uh, since this component was rendered. Okay, so now that we know the post has changed, we need to tell Next.js to clear its client side routing cache. And we can do that using Next.js's revalidate path API. And we're gonna give this method a path of slash, which means it should invalidate every single page in the routing cache. And then now if we click our check if post change button, look at that, uh, we get did change true and our page automatically updates and we get the new post title. So our client side cache has been invalidated, but right now it's a little annoying that our users have to uh, start this process by clicking this uh, check if post change button. So let's try to come up with a better way to make this uh, check automatically happen. And we're gonna do that with a new client component. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna create a new component called refresh cache. And this file is gonna export a component called refresh cache. And right now it's just gonna return null. Now we want this refresh cache component to take a check and a check is gonna be that function that we just wrote. In other words, our check is just gonna be an async function that returns nothing. And then now back over in our page component, we are gonna render that refresh cache component and we're gonna pass in a check, which will be our check if post changed function. And while we're here, we're gonna get rid of this form and button. 
Okay, now for the really fun part. We get to go to town in this refresh cache component. And I think the first thing I wanna do, so I wanna make this a client component. And I wanna make this component reactive to browser events. So I wanna say that whenever our window is refocused, we are going to call that check function. And then we'll set up an event listener for focus that calls on focus. And then we'll return some cleanup here that removes the event listener. Okay, so now when I come over to our page and I click, uh, you'll notice the window got focus and we did a check if the post has changed. In fact, every time I go in between my editor and uh, the page, we're gonna run that check. So pretty cool. But the real test here is gonna be to come over to Prisma Studio and we're gonna edit this post. And then now if we go back to the tab and look at that, the title automatically updated to 456. We didn't have to take any action ourselves. So this is a pretty cool way to just make sure every time the user comes back to your app, you're checking if their data has changed and then you're refreshing the cache. Now, one of the things that I think is so cool about having this check function is we don't have to only use an on focus event. Uh, let's go ahead and just comment out our effect. And I'm gonna use this use interval hook and use interval is gonna take a function. So we're gonna call check every thousand milliseconds. And then now you can see in the console uh, every second, we're just checking to see if the post has changed. So if we go back to Prisma Studio, make this 789. By the time we have uh, moved back to our tab, our page has already been updated because that check function is running every second. So again, one of the really cool things about this approach is we can totally control how and when we invoke this check function. Okay, let's uh, comment out our interval. And I wanna show you the pattern that I like to use for invalidating the cache. And I like to use uh, an interval combined with this focus event. And uh, the idea is you only run the interval while the window is focused. So we are gonna come up here and we're gonna create a new piece of state called should run that we're gonna to default to true. And then we'll bring our effect back. And inside of our effect, whenever we focus, uh, we are gonna set should run to true. And then we're gonna have the opposite uh, whenever we unfocus, which is gonna be called the blur, uh, we are gonna set should run to false. And then we'll set up another event listener that does a blur event and it invokes on blur. And then also we need to do some cleanup here. Uh, we will also clean up our blur event. And now we have this piece of state called should run and this is gonna control when our interval should run. So if should run, we are gonna run every second. Otherwise, we'll use null here. Null is gonna tell our interval to disable itself. So if we pass null to use interval, our interval never runs. Okay, now if we save, uh, we start off polling. We come over to our app. We're still polling, uh, but as soon as we go back to our editor, you can see that our polling stops. So this way we are only checking for updates when the user is actually using the app. Now. Uh, we started off should pull is true, but really we only want to start off should pull when the uh, the document has focus. So we'll we'll seed that state with document has focus. We also need to do a type of check on document to make sure it exists. So we'll make sure document is not equal to undefined and the document has focus. Now let's go back to Prisma Studio over here and let's just do another update to our post title. We'll say one 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 save and when we come back to our tab you can see that the title just automatically updates now there was a little delay it took about a second for us to get that new title and that is because uh this on focus event only starts the uh the polar only starts the interval the interval isn't going to run for another second so really we want to update this we want to say that when a focus event happens we want to immediately invoke our check function uh, and then we want to kick off our interval. So uh, let's test this out again. Let's go back to studio, change this to 222, and then back to our tab, and look at that. The title automatically updated. And I think that this is just such a cool way to give us control over Next.js's client-side routing cache, especially when we're dealing with data that lives in an external system that can change outside of our Next.js app, for example, someone opens up Prisma Studio 
and just starts editing blog post titles. So I just wanted to make this video and share this server action because I know a lot of developers have run into issues like getting their pages to reflect the current state of their database. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.